Good evening. It's my pleasure to be presenting at uh, tonight's TED event. I also wanted to add, I'm a proud Mohawk grad myself, so I really appreciate the opportunity to come back and give both to the college and to the program that started off my career. Tonight I want to talk a little bit about 3D printing. In particular, I want to talk about how design, both from a professional and a grassroots level, will contribute to that technology as it emerges and as it gains acceptance in uh, today's society. That idea of design driving a new or emerging technology, it's happened before, right? We've seen that event pri uh, previously. Come the circa the end of World War II, you started to see the emergence of some new and interesting materials, that being plastics being one of them. And those plastic manufacturers were looking for folks to come up with new interesting ideas for their material that were different or outside of the military or defense applications. We saw individuals such as Earl Tupper come up with there we go. All right, come up with some interesting designs, for example, Tupperware, right, took advantage of the unique and novel properties plastics had to offer. A little later on, we saw Robin Day come up with an item that we see every day. We almost see it in the background, in the polyprop chair. Those designers took advantage, again, of the unique capabilities that plastics offered, afforded them the opportunity to come up with new and novel designs, interesting and new form and function from materials. When we're looking at what they've created, they took those particular materials and drove an entire industry. With the uh, addition of technologies such as plastic injection molding, we started to see a completely new design aesthetic emerge from the combination of form and functions that plastic had, the visions of the designers that took on those challenges at the time, and the economics, cost and productivity that those manufacturing processes offered. Essentially, they were creating objects of desire right, for that particular time with those particular materials. We're starting to see an interesting parallel with where 3D printing is today, or the ability to take digital information and create a physical object. It ranges all the way from the typical desktop printers that we see or imagine as 3D printing systems, all the way up to really high strength industrial grade production technologies, we'll call those additive manufacturing. When we're looking at the combination of performance that those systems now offer us today in terms of turning digital into physical, we're faced with a similar opportunity with respect to creating novel form and function out of parts. As opposed to having material, we now have a process. 3D printing lets us to do interesting things that we couldn't do previously with traditional processes. Typically describe that process whereby you can't really drill a curved hole, but we can easily print one. And that is really a whole change in the mindset about the way products are going to look and feel. They're going to take on a whole new different characteristic in terms of how they function, how they perform, the kind of benefits that uh, the consumer or the end user will realize. When we start looking at some of those uh, opportunities, that can't drill the curved hole type feature, we start to see some very interesting industrial products come out. The ability to produce parts that we couldn't before. For example, really high performance, lightweight items that incorporate webs or honeycombs or lattice on the inside, whereby we can perform the same job as a part that weighed maybe five or 10 times. Or we're looking at really interesting components here that perform a similar function, yet take on a much more organic or a much more biological-like look. It's essentially a new way of describing the form and function of those particular parts. The, en the engineers, the designers, and so on today have that tool at their disposal, just as our previous generation did faced with the opportunities that plastics afforded in terms of a new product paradigm. All right. When we're starting to look at this technology as well, we're starting to see that from a grassroots level, right, there are now new and interesting opportunities that are being afforded for the individual out there to explore or to take advantage of their creative opportunities. They can look at creating new and interesting products today with a technology as opposed to a material that lets them exercise that creative intent. Some of the items that we see today, for example, groups coming together with our desktop printing systems, fairly inexpensive, relatively easy to operate, right, relatively user-friendly. We start tackling some very pressing problems that we have, for example, design and production of prosthetic devices. A real grassroots absurgent of people that are taking advantage of what 3D printing can do, how it sits in their office or home or shop because that technology is that accessible. And we're starting to satisfy requirements that had been previously 
very high end, very complex problems. Also, when we start looking at from a grassroots level, what 3D printing offers us an opportunity to engage in, our own creativity. We've all heard mass customization, right? I want a product tailored to my specific needs. 3D printing allows us to go a step further. Not only do we have we a mass customized part, you have your part. It's your creativity, it's your design, it's your vision that you can now create that is allow you going to produce that novel form and function for the everyday items and the everyday parts you're going to use. The access to that technology is now fostering that kind of evolution with respect to what we can do with the things we consume every day. Also see that a little bit more when we start leading on the artistic side, right? Jewelry is another really good example where 3D printing is now allowing individuals to start exercising their creativity, to start to deliver the products and the designs and the forms that they see that fit their needs, right? Allows them to create the kind of items they desire for their particular use or for their particular consumption. So where does that lead us today with respect to uh, the future of 3D printing? We see a really grassroots, uh, grassroots upsurgence of people that are taking the opportunity to create the items they see for themselves. They tailor these items to themselves. They now can exercise some of that design creativity. We see consumers now becoming their own designers and manufacturers. When we start looking at the professional side, right, we're starting to see again that very novel combination of form and function. 3D printing, or when we step up to the industrial equivalent additive manufacturing, also brings us a really interesting sustainability dynamic. The amount of waste reduction that we have uh, within 3D printing or additive that we can achieve in terms of efficient parts and so on leads to further reductions in greenhouse gases, and further reduction in our carbon footprint. That combination of unique form and function and the sustainability is essentially giving us a new design aesthetic. The design aesthetic that we saw with plastics is still around. We still that, see that today. We're seeing that the future of 3D printing will be a new aesthetic that we will see in the future going forward. It'll be around for the next 100 years or so, just as we are seeing and continue to see that plastics aesthetic for fostering a future development for us. Thank you very much.